Hello all, and this is going to be my standalone video for political economy and death with Baudrillard uh, covering a discussion really on uh, humanism as a sort of category. And <clears throat> since we went through Foucault first and initially, it could be really helpful to use, um, I think it would be fair to say that Baudrillard takes a lot from Foucault's uh, epistemology, uh, or at least the uh, thesis, really, of the order of things, if you will. And so, uh, of course, with these uh, you know French intellectuals at the time, they always cross-pollinated and you know borrowed ideas. And so, uh, having this uh, you know full-length discussions uh, covering as many as we can. Uh, really helps uh, in this here. And so really the chapter discussion really of uh, political economy and death, we can perhaps look, or at least uh, it, it's useful for me to consider, you know, when Aristotle would talk of barbarians uh, and the Greeks, although Aristotle did see some similarities with uh, how barbarians acted, uh, but nonetheless, really here, the idea, at least with uh, Baudrillard in this context, is really the difference between the systemic, the, the ordered human, if you will, uh, the rational or enlightenment as compared to non-human or uh, the savage, if you will, the barbarian, as it were. And so you have this sort of binary between the framework of a civil society of humanism in that context compared to really the biological uh, agamben like if you will bare naked life and so this is a dichotomy of what is really the exterior outside as compared to a discussion of well, aristotelian essence if you will or at least uh, the platonic essence or the forms instead this is really a, an exterior comparison that uh, really begins in, in, in the Enlightenment or um, at least past 19th century. And so, you know, it's the comparison to the outside, if you will. So the humanity, as I've said, is really an instantiation of a category in the modern world that Baudrillard's picking up on here. Um, but nonetheless, there's a sort of, um, you know, a reduction in that where, you know, you have this totalizing use of a framework in the ordering or the epistemic uh, situation you may find yourself in uh, as compared to, you know, an arbitrary category of animal. And, you know, as such, there's hierarchical treatments such as, you know, a categorical difference between you know, what is human-like and what is not. And of course, we you know, look at that this with this sort of, um, you know, chain of being, if you will, that we kind of have conditioned where, you know, the human uh, category is, of course, above the animal one. And so Baudrillard in his insights here is trying to really draw a comparison of the enlightenment and the categorical difference compared to the mystery and confrontations of other cultures, of other peoples. Um, you know, it, it's much more than just the umbrella term, if you will, of um, another race. It's really a confrontation with mystery. Are we, you know, dealing with the divine when we cross a new culture? This is something that, you know, in the symbolic exchange culture, if you will, would be much more of a dynamic discussion than just, categories of race or difference. Um, and so institutional racism, at least for Baudrillard, can only exist within the framework of a totalizing system, such as universal reason or establishing, establishing a sort of social aggregate that represents entirely classifications of people. Uh, and so, you know, you're really splitting within those classifications of others to be this and instead of that. And um, 
Baudrillard actually turns to Foucault himself, where <clears throat> you know, in, in um, you know, the category of madness or what we think of it, um, and, and the use of asylums to um, you know house them, if you will. You know, Baudrillard expands this sort of dichotomy here with you know low IQ people, uh, poor uh, people, women, um, other really excommunicated categories, if you will, as opposed to the formal normalized definition of human. And so Baudrillard, of course, is very weary of this sort of, you know, universal reason and, and society that could come forth that, um, you know, normal and the universal are, are threaded as such. And there's no confrontation or really any mystery anymore, as it were, to any sort of category or the sort of, um, you know, differences that could uh, come about with such a relationship. And so Baudrillard really is saying, you know, in the modern world, it's not normal to simply die as a sort of biological um, adherence, if you will, to, you know, be or not be. Uh, there's a much more dynamic relationship, and of course I mentioned this in the video before the last one where uh, I talked of my grandfather on the anniversary of his, uh, his death, and, um, you know, I tried to, you know, reinvigorate that sort of uh, idea of, you know, death and, and sacrifice, because of course, you know, only when someone truly um, you know, biologically end in that sort of Baudrillardian sense, if you will, that he's talking of here. Um, you know, I think the, the full exterior, if you will, is, is, you know, in the post, if you will. Um, now, of course, there could be some contention with that. It's something that I haven't really fleshed out all the way myself. Um, but, you know, I digress here. Um, you know, he's trying to really get at the potential of death as a sort of you know, sacrifice. And, you know, really to flesh out this insight, when he considers something like uh, industrial capitalism with uh, Marx, uh, factories, you know, no longer existed because labor in and of itself uh, was, you know, democratized, if you will, to outside of the factory. It, you know, proliferated all of society. And now we have something like working from home where you can be productive in your own living room and, you know, just kind of being on hand at all times, if you will. And so he extends this to say, you know, just as the cemetery no longer exists because the city is death. Uh, and, you know, there's a really interesting insight here, I think, of course, to, you know, what Spangler, of course, had to say with civilization being, you know, the winter stage and the withering of a culture. Baudrillard, in a lot of ways here, uh, you know, says this uh, in his own sort of way of, you know, the city and its intellect really is the final form, or at least it's the way it totalizes us. Um, and, you know, there's this cultural death with the rise of the, you know, mega, uh, you know, metropolis, if you will. And so humans, uh, as Baudrillard would continue, um, you know, there's two biological functions, uh, and, and Baudrillard, even though he is a philosopher who, you know, pronounces how, you know, there's no actual real totalizing truth, he nonetheless, you know, acknowledges that there's a, you know, biological and unchanging fact that, you know, life and death is something that you're going to have to go through as a human being, and these are absolute truths. But if we conjure one away, such as death, um, we no longer really have that same apprehension of, of our humanity. Um, and Baudrillard, of course, is going to pick this up later in his career, where he's going to talk of, you know, really the simulative um, or, or this sort of system, these frameworks, these epistemes, the order of things, um, you know, has, you know, put in place such a way that, you know, death uh, 
no longer has any sort of meaning, perhaps beyond just this sort of scientific way of seeing being and non-being. For death is local and in the city it's stripped of value and meaning. Therefore, humanity is a sort of perpetual, ongoing death. Um, but then he turns really to the idea of immortality, which of course is extricably next to something like death. And so immortality grows along with the relationship of non-being, the loss of immortality and the rise of a sort of political landscape, which is concerned really with, you know, our extension of, of this sort of utilitarian um, framework, if you will, towards... Uh, being youthful or or at least it sort of has a sort of biasness towards you know preserving one's youth because you're trying to ward off your own death and so um, you know life then in the political landscape because it's a sort of you know formalized code and of course uh, you know it's worth mentioning what uh, you know the original policies almost four years ago now was really this sort of formalized logic if in a lot of ways there was a lot of uh, you know statistical hamming uh, uh, of these uh, you know ways of seeing how many how many deaths could have been saved in in these circumstances or uh, I think Baudrillard really uh, hits the nail on the head here with uh, this um, the scientific apparatus really to give truth that you know, closes change or, or a revolution. And in the case of the extension of life, this is the strategy really of the last man with Spangler, the, uh, the bankrupt culture that's incapable of engaging with meaning to allow for such, uh, you know, greatness within uh, life. Because of course, if you're you know, taking away the meaning of death, then, you know, the sacrifices, the you know, the sacrifice towards excellence, uh, which is, of course, required to, you know, master really anything, I think. Um, um, you know, this requires a sacrifice as, you know, in your being as you were alive. Um, and, and But this, of course, is done away with in this sort of sense that, you know, if we're just constantly trying to extend, you know, life, there might not be any actual meaning to it. And again, this goes back to some of those policies where, you know, what was the lived life really worth in those circumstances for many people? And of course we, you know, look back now and we have a lot of uh, data to really show, you know, how depressed, how unhealthy a lot of uh, uh, people were allowed to get that they otherwise might not have had to in uh, certain um, situations. <clears throat> they were, you know, pivoted towards such a way, uh, you know, zapped of their potential of life uh, for really the extension of life. And again, I think Baudrillard just hit the nail right on the head in, in a lot of his insights here with, you know, this... Uh, you know, dreading of this sort of totalizing framework that uh, really has no meaning of, of our lives now um, beyond just this sort of regurgitative framework. Um, and as such, you know, he turns the, of course, death is just a materialistic framing of nature then, of, of, of being a thing in the world. Uh, and, you know, as such, we have no connection to the divine or, you know, a cosmological, uh, you know, ionic, if you will, with Deleuze, um, uh, you know, potentiality even, even though, of course, he, uh, you know, is a materialist in uh, his own uh, right. Death is uh, now materialistic. And, of course, when you enter Freud into this discussion with the death driver, uh, you have the closing and the totalizing of the death drive as uh, uh, not, uh, you know, in with the totalizing and retaining of the possibilities of actual changes. Um, 
because for reliance and servitude of the death drive requires the abandonment of the system of you know rigid aggregated thought and so the death drive must be a sort of negation of any constructive system baudrillard is in a sense trying to say to us that um, you know as great as the insight of what the death drive may have to offer it's still in a way kind of hinging on you know being totalizing and uh you know the real uh, uh magic if you will for baudrillard is in how uh you know you can't actually have these sort of causal explanations for something like the death drive if you will um it, it averts that sort of constructive system um but the death driver in that sense you know, plays into itself, into this, you know, biological functionality of death that he wants to, you know, move us away from because it, uh, again, this is how he reads, you know, really Marx, uh, psychoanalysis. Ultimately, even though they are trying to be liberatory, they are still, even how they see this sort of liberatory way, are presupposing this sort of formalized logics that um you know they're or aggregated thought if you will um uh, uh it, it still uh, totalizes us um and so the biological finality of desire for example um is not based on a biological imperative but an epistemological shift towards what he deems as the natural sciences and so the death drive cannot totally be codified or again grasped because it doesn't allow for a sort of dialectic and as such there's no real recovery and for Baudrillard um, you know this again even though there's a sort of radical potential with death um, and and even though we you know located in the sort of you know states of affairs of you know being or non-being there's still, of course, the mystery that exhibits itself uh, in that sort of way. And so death can't really conform as such um, and can't conform really to a sort of biological arena or a sort of positivistic notion. Death has a relationship to the unknowing and not this, you know, totalizing, again, scientific framework that he's allergic to. Um, it is one of uh, cosmology and of the divine. And so really, yeah, I skipped a lot around here, but he's essentially saying that, you know, desire and um, something like that, even though we can base this in a sort of biological way, um, there is still a sort of you know, unveiling, a sort of mystery really to uh, such things. And so Baudrillard is going to turn to uh, Bataille and how he challenges really the political economy. But at its core, Baudrillard is going to really pick at um, uh, that, you know, despite the fact that he's opening up for sort of a radical analysis, but uh, it still falls short for the sort of ultimate source of potential. And then he turns really to as I talked about the Aztec death, uh, the sun, you know, isn't just something that just gives on to the earth and, you know, needs sacrifices. Uh, but, um, you know, there's, there's a sort of relationship with compensation or, or the defiance even of the sun. And so Bataille in his sort of revolutionary thought of being outside of you know, disciplinary functions. Uh, one of the analogies really is kind of, you know, being outside of sexual pleasure where, you know, you have the sort of, um, you know, actual states of affairs, a sort of bodily exchange, the sort of fluids, you know, the not so, uh, you know, great aspects, if you will, of a political economic uh, system or a humanist uh, rationality. And so, Every death is social, individual, and collective, uh, which is an important insight uh, because the group must endure, you know, death uh, of a singular, um, and death as such has a sort of meaning of a social public uh, 
and you know even has a sort of collective institution uh, this is really where you want to insert perhaps the realm of uh, taxonomies of the splitting between human beings animals plants but you know we ultimately think in that sort of chain of being way of uh, humans and animals you know there's a sort of anxiousness of the status that we you know we have to differentiate between the two of you know we are humans and they are animals um, and so the same could be applied to the extradition of death as this sort of fear of you know being outside of being if you will um, and so Baudrillard says that this sort of disgust is inspired uh, to the exact proportion to the contempt we hold in the human privilege where something like the death penalty which was you know big in the discourse at the time this was written um, or uh, as it were a sort of blurring between the human and the animal as we relegate the animal to something like non-human and as such they become you know unworthy of a human ritual and you know this is how you end up where you have all these you know terrible commercial farms and there's uh, really a particular uh, instance I can think of where uh, I, I, I really like chicken a lot and so <laughs> I had a friend show me this footage of this uh, chicken farm and you know one of the chickens wasn't even you know it didn't even resemble a chicken any longer it was just this sort of vessel of, of, of what would be considered nutrients or you know that you know upcoming meal uh, in this sort of productive capacity that the see with these animal farms were no longer even the animals really resemble what the animals were supposed to be uh, they're they're just this sort of fungible token and I think a lot of ways this is also goes into the fear of something like AI or some of these you know biological um, um, innovations if you will that we've seen recently where you know you can trade out these these organs you can trade out these people you can even you know grow entire uh you know new bodies out of uh you know the duplication if you will of another um and it's something to really consider here when you know we're talking about this dichotomy of differentiating ourselves between human and the otherness the other category um, but he also points to this insight of you know we infantize these animals while simultaneously producing these conditions and so you know you're seeing them being outside of the human ritual uh, in short and so essentially he says you know you're thrown into the pit because their death holds no value in modernity where you know you have the biological positioning within the you know the simulative state or machinery as you know the difference between being productive and not being productive um, I think again um, Baudrillard was very influential to me on my early stuff on the channel of course if you couldn't already uh, pick that up in my videos here but um, you know, I'll plug again in one of my other videos of how the virtual killed reason, where I you know talk about how you know the this sort of same kind of similar dichotomy with how uh, you know something like this YouTube video. As long as this sort of service of YouTube, if you will, is up and running, if I you know biologically ended tomorrow, this video could still be seen and sort of really changes how we see our death uh, if we have these sort of uh, these graphics on, on this sort of virtual basis now and of course with a lot of technology think of um, you know you're having these holographic celebrities and you know music icons coming back from the dead you know what is the meaning of death then if you know sacrifice is, is gone uh, that you would see in the symbolic exchange societies uh, before or at least a, a sort of shift uh, at bare minimum if not just made into this you know again scientist uh, 
biologically determined uh, framework of, of a lack of meaning between you know, life and death. And so we are made productive by our being and not by our death. And in politics, this is a creative insight uh, that he looks at with the dichotomies of his current political situation. Um, with the death penalty, the right, of course, favored it, while the left was of rehabilitation. But for Baudrillard, this was both the side of death, because uh, the left is, was just really doing a sort of uh, empathetic sort of medical jargon of, of the language of curing a diseased person, Ultimately, that diseased person has to have a sort of death drive, if you will, um, to, you know, be rehabilitized from that sort of diseased brain. Um, again, it, it goes to, you know, the diseased person uh, on the right, the diseased soul, if you will, as compared to diseased organs and the sort of, uh, you know, loss of autonomy as you're, you know, put in through this sort of rehabilitative system that ultimately requires a morphology themselves in this medical apparatus into what is declared normal uh, and as such is, is a form of, of death. Uh, Baudrillard says that death is embodied in both in the political solutions at, you know, contemporary 1970s at the time were a death that neither really hold any sort of sway of, of meaning beyond just this sort of medical evaluation. Um, and so every death, though, despite this, he would point that, you know, every death outside of this totalizing political sphere, which he points to with suicide, um, although we're beginning to see, you know, some nations such as our friends in the North and Canada, um, the assisted suicide programs that are uh, beginning to uh, come into being, if you will. And so maybe we're seeing uh, even more of a totalizing way where now suicide can actually be put in uh, a logic or at least formalized as such to be accounted for uh, that, you know, said amount of people could commit suicide, uh, which is a, a very nauseating thought i think uh, to myself that you know you know a state logic that you know baudrillard is is afraid of here um could actually you know accord for citizens you know choosing to anhero themselves i i think it's a very bone or spine tingling uh um insight here but Again, Baudrillard is fearful of that totalizing logic that, that precedes every death, whether it's, you know, in the medical sphere, in the prison system, um, and uh, the sort of decentralization of the cemetery, really. Um, and so Baudrillard moves towards this, you know, worry of a state that can totalize all of difference and possibility, and as such could tame something like an insurrection or terrorism um for baudrillard you know the real fear would be that you know you would have a state that actually in its logic could you know totally do away with any sort of antagonism or questioning towards it um and uh, this leaves no room for any confrontation for any possibilities but Continuing, um, we have to ask, or he does, you know, or we should be asking alongside him, is, is death really revolutionary? Because, you know, the political economy is an attempt to codify death, because it contains that only death can overcome it. Um, and so Baudrillard turns to sexuality, which was the emancipation, but sex, of course, is, you know, legal. Anyone could you know, have sex, which of course there's, you know, some laws in place, of course, not questioning that, but, um, you know, the act of, of, of sex is rather, you know, free, at least uh, in the first world. Um, and so, nonetheless, though, this, you know, puts sex into the political economy, whereas death, um, although, again, rather recently, we've seen a, a bit of a shift here, Death is something that's still illegal, and 
you know, we do see a shift, but nonetheless, almost every YouTuber plugs something like better help, if you will. Um, so you, yeah, I think it still holds up here that, you know, death is still considered something illegal or, or a sort of suicide. Um, you know, we, the state wants to ward that off with, uh, you know, their institutions. Um, and so for Baudrillard, of course, this is where the radicalism actually lies. Um, and then um, he really directs towards language, really, where Baudrillard points the reference of language and speech as the de development, really, of representation to language um, and how, you know, speech has these different developments. Um, language is an autonomous sphere uh, in a sort of objective, uh, even though it's rationalized itself. Uh, in its manipulation through the usage of speech. Um, and so speculation and free circulation in the exchange of speech gives way to this sort of, you know, written code of, you know, what does it actually signify, if you will. And, uh, you know, you could point to how Deleuze saw linguistics in a thousand plateaus um, and, and, you know, the, the sort of structuralism, which was popular at the time with, you know, language as this sort of scientific uh, abbreviation, uh, which was, you know, towards linguistics, uh, which contained these sort of local properties, but nonetheless was compartmentalized, if you will, into its sort of taxonomic arena. Um, I know that was a lot to... And of course, within the text itself, it's so much more dense than what I'm like giving you here. But um, yeah, um, it's a very dense ideas towards language here. Uh, and in so we turn to one of the science fiction stories that Baudrillard wants to use as an example of the nine billion names of God, which is, uh, you know, the story of a group of lost uh, Tibetan uh, lamasaries who wants to develop a resuscitation of the sort of symbolic exchange of the name of, of God, if you will, where, uh, you know, they're trying to uncover all of the stated or, if you will, the formalized or, or linguistic structures towards God as a sort of uh, symbolism. And so... Once this is, uh, you know, allowed to pass or this sort of death driver of trying to, you know, name all the names of God to bring about the end of the world, this is the cycle of the world, as it were. Um, and so by exhausting the sort of corpus of the name of God, this is ultimately the, you know, instantiation really of the death driver, if you will. But nonetheless, in the story uh, going along here, you really see, um, um, you know, the use of technology of a sort of computer apparatus or a simulation, if you will, that speeds up with technological processes. And in a few days, you know, they uncover all of the nine billion names of God. This would have took, you know, generations of this Tibetan uh, lamasaries, but, um, you know, the, the technology accelerates. Uh, brings about the end of the world and its disappearance. Um, and so this really accentuates, you know, the, sim uh, the, the symbolism really of the location or the mode of being and really accelerates to the sort of end point, a, a forcing of the flourishing and comes into being in a forcing of this rationality of science which of course accelerates to the end of the world, this sort of totalizing uh, scientism. And so Baudrillard sees this with language, where you know the local structures are eroded away by, uh, you know, what Heidegger would consider, you know, the sort of being on hand, uh, you know, scientific logic, if you will, or uh, in framing, quite literally. Um, and, and language has a sort of antithesis to this because, you know, language has a sort of historical system, you know, etymology, if you will. Um, and really the development of natural history wasn't from, you know, the telos of 
humanity, if you will. But it was in that moment that Foucault points out that, you know, history in and of itself became natural, which, of course, uh, harkens to, you know, um, recursively, I guess, kind of uh, reasserting yourself in the historical system of a natural history. Um, that, uh, you know, Baudrillard, of course, is, is very suspicious of. And then he turns to a uh, discussion really on uh, the Marx Brothers or Harpo Marx with uh, satire, um, which, you know, this blows away in this sort of linguistics, in this, you know, doubling of, uh, you know, uh, the password and, and what it means in the symbolism compared to the actual present at hand object, if you will, or the sturgeon. Um, this is, you know, in this sort of, you know, funny, sort of kitschy way, um, a poetic act for Baudrillard, where, you know, you're putting the signifier to its own death by its own reference, you know, you're referencing ultimately another signifier that's supposed to represent this, but there, you know, there's ambiguity. And, um, you know, when I was going over this again, this made me think, of course, with, you know, the dissidents, um, you know, how meme culture kind of, you know, got us here, if you will, and could be seen really in the same way, you know, graffiti or, um, you know, the satire uh, example here of poetry, which, you know, exists ultimately inside, you know, linguistics, of course, and just as, you know, memes is allowed to exhibit itself within, you know, the framework of something like decentralized, uh, you know, Internet 2.0 or whatever, you know, structure you want to call it. Uh, and, you know, there are discourses about, um, you know, certain subjects or, you know, political parameters. But, you know, meme culture can, you know, have this sort of playfulness or this defacement of, you know, these old signifiers. Um, and I think that, you know, goes into really what the charm really of the last decade or so with, you know, the cultural creation really of, you know, what is considered revolutionary being simultaneous with, you know, this poetry here, this use of uh, meme culture, if you will, that undermines, you know, the logic uh, of that day. And um, this is really the same here. He's saying that with, you know, the poetic, um, and, um, uh, you know, it's an adversion really to being compartmentalized in this scientific or, you know, way that an institution might exhibit its own agency, um, you know, towards the world or towards a citizenry, if you will. And so the symbolic end is, uh, you know, the primitive or this, you know, the bracket and, you know, reductionaries, if you will, like a Freud or a Marx in Marxism, doesn't account or make productive um, uh, the symbolic. Um, and so within the mirror of production, which I might upload full length videos for, it just depends on how these other Baudrillard videos do. I don't want to do uh, too much Baudrillard if uh, people aren't as interested. Um, desire is made productive or, um, you know, in the Marxist, uh, schematic, if you will, um, you know, you're trying to make productive the forces outside of the very political economic logic. But of course, by, you know, making productive the sort of outside, you know, or historical dialectic, if you will, you're actually entering it into the political economy. Um, that Baudrillard has really a problem with in the mirror of production with Marx or Marxism in general. But I wanted to end on a little insight here um, with, you know, Baudrillard, uh, of course, is always considered, um, you know, very blackpilling when I've discussed this before. But I wanted to reiterate again, because I think he's such a valuable thinker and is obviously you know, misconstrued in a lot of ways, um, you know, think back to play or graffiti or poetry, 
you know, these are all ultimately examples that goes beyond scientism or the Freudian psychoanalysis or the Marxist uh, finality of what is deemed productive. Um, and so that brings the likes of desire, of course, back into its formalized political economy um, by attributing the same sort of functionality to them. So as such, they mirror the oppressive uh, systems logic prior to it. And Baudrillard, again, he's trying to offer these strategies that are ultimately allergic or even could be seen as a sort of antidote, if you will, depending on how you look at it. Um, you know, Baudrillard sees this as more of a sick world that maybe you could hand out occasional cures for rather than being, a, you know, this clean kept world where you know, tons of, of illness and, and, and wrongdoings is happening around you. Uh, this is going to some of his other works earlier. Um, you know, think of this as, you know, perhaps a bad world where there are only a limited number of strategies really to bring about meaning into it that I think, you know, Baudrillard offers us here and is a sort of white pill that's, you know, underneath, if you will, the black pill that uh, so many people attribute to him. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed Symbolic Exchange and Death. Um, and uh, I think for the next one, we're going to do uh, Simulacra and Simulation finally. Um, and yeah, if you're interested in taking part in that, uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and join me.